All right, y'all. Here we are, back at it with the Stoics. And today we're going to study my boy, Marcus Aurelius, this guy right here. Okay, big boss. Uh, some of you read the meditations, or maybe you saw that on the reading list. That's this guy. Okay, he wrote those. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on in there. Uh, and I'll show you my copy just so you know I'm not full of it. Isn't it pretty? I got it from a used bookstore in town called The Amber Unicorn. And when this virus is over, if that bookstore is still open, you should go give them all your money. They have beautiful used books. Anyway, moving on. Okay, that ad was free because I love their store so much. So. Um, what you need to know about Marcus Aurelius, let's get started there, okay? Remember, Epictetus was a slave, and I like starting with Epictetus because I just think Epictetus is such a hero, right? To, like, have a life that was really not dictated by him, no power, no privilege, and to still be like, listen, my life is what I make of it. Um, it that's powerful to me, personally. But Marcus Aurelius, what I like, why I like going from Epictetus to Marcus is that he had everything. Okay, Marcus Aurelius was from a prominent family. He was very wealthy, um, and he was literally chosen to be emperor. And I wrote my name down over here because I'm not good with those. But um, Hadrian was the emperor at the time, and he didn't have an heir, so he chose Antoninus. And yes, I looked up how to pronounce that, Antoninus, um, to be his successor. And then had Antoninus adopt Marcus, so that when Antoninus died, Marcus could be the next emperor. So he was like, in a way, literally chosen to rule, okay? It wasn't something he had by merit of his birth. Although he did have a very prominent birth, he wasn't in a royal line, okay? But that says a lot about his character and about who he is. Um, he was one of the five good emperors, okay? He, he was an emperor that, that was a very, very good leader, right? Um, was uh, beloved by people, was successful um, in his military campaigns. He, he kept his empire at peace. Um, by all accounts, a very successful uh, leader. Um, and he was a Stoic philosopher, okay? He, he ate from the spoon of Epictetus. Um, and he wrote his Meditations, which is the book I showed you, during the last decade of his life. Um, while he was on a military campaign. So he'd go and like be a war leader all day and then come back to his tent at night and write these reflections. Essentially, when you read the meditations, you're reading his personal journal. Unlike Epictetus, who had his students write everything down for him, this is like peeking into a dude's diary. Now, the Aurelius, obviously, when people write things like this, people of prominence write things like this, did he know people would probably look at it afterwards? Yeah, of course he did. But these, these still are his personal reflections, right? And what he thinks it means um, to live a good life and to be a good person, okay? Um, and I found this, and I just thought it was super interesting to share, um, because Marcus Aurelius is a Stoic, and so he believed in wisdom and virtue and principled living. And you guys, that's really important because he was a king, and what could we're an emperor? And what can people in power and privilege do? anything they want, literally anything they want. If he wanted to live like a sex, drugs, rock and roll kind of lifestyle, he could have. No one would have told him not to. If he wanted to live in a lap of luxury, he could have. No one would have told him not to. If he wanted to spend all the tax money on whatever he wanted, he could have. Nobody would have told him not to. But he didn't. He didn't. He lived a life guided by the Stoic principles. Um, and uh, I'm just going to read this, what's on the slide for you. But what's tragic about Marcus, as one scholar wrote, is how his philosophy, which is about self-restraint, duty, and respect for others, was so abjectly abandoned by the imperial line he anointed on his death. Um, which means, essentially, people didn't pick it up. They didn't, they didn't pick up his torch. They didn't, they didn't lead the way that he led. Okay? Um, and I think that's hard, right? Like, when you're in a position of power and you have access to things, when you have wealth, when you have privilege whatever it may be, we're not all going to be emperors, right? But to an extent, a lot of us have access and privilege to things. Um, are we using that virtuously? Are we using that to serve others? Are we putting our desires to the side for the good of the whole? Um, that's what Marcus Aurelius was about. All right, that's what Marcus Aurelius was about. And we're going to read a few lines from his meditations. I've chosen some that I think are particularly pertinent um, in, in this time, Okay. Um, so let me see if this is going to work the way I want it to work. Yes. So the first, um, when you arise in the morning, think of what a precious privilege it is to be alive, to breathe, to think, to enjoy, and to love. And I chose that one because we keep waking up and we are still stuck in our houses and 
we don't have all the stuff to do that we typically do and we're probably missing our friends and our family members that aren't living in our current home we're probably missing our activities maybe we're missing our jobs our sports um maybe even school i don't know like i like school i like going to school i miss y'all um and so it's easy for me to get kind of bummed out you know um but um Marcus Aurelius would encourage me, right, because he probably got bummed up too. It's probably hard to be an emperor. There's probably a lot of stuff going down. It's a real drag. And But when you rise in the morning, think of what a privilege, precious privilege it is to be alive, right? And I love that phrasing, precious privilege, right? That's about the English teacher in me, right? But we have the opportunity today to breathe, to think, to enjoy, to love. And that's a really powerful thing. And not everybody has that today. And some people that had it yesterday don't have it anymore. And we won't always have it forever. And we may have lost a lot. We may lose everything. But I can breathe, and I can think, and I can enjoy, and I can love. And yeah, I can do that from afar, and you can too. Okay? Uh, here we go, the next one. The happiness of your life depends on the quality of your thoughts. Therefore, guard accordingly, and take care that you entertain no notions unsuitable to virtue and reasonable nature, okay? The happiness of your life depends on the quality of your thoughts. We live in an era today where we know a lot about happiness psychology. We know that gratitude practice um, can change our neural pathways. We know that we can train certain dispositions into our brain. He only had experience, right? He didn't live in that era. He didn't know that stuff, right? So the happiness you experience, he's trying to remind you, like literally it's all in how you perceive of something, right? All in how you perceive of what's going on, right? Is there a lot of stuff going on right now that's a super bummer? Absolutely. Absolutely. And a super bummer is an understatement, okay? People are sick. Um, people are dying. People are fighting. People are scared. Um, people are panicked. People are losing things, losing business, um, losing opportunities, right? Losing, we're losing a lot right now. It would be very easy to descend into sadness or despair or anger, um, because of that. But he also says that I can affect my thoughts, right? Am, am I gonna, are my thoughts going to make what's going on outside my house go away? Absolutely not. That's unrealistic. That's just silliness. But what my thoughts can do is change my perspective, right? So some of the thoughts I've been thinking are, what is this an opportunity to do? Uh, well, one of the things is it's an opportunity to learn how to make these videos. I mean, I've never done this before. I'm making it up as I go along. I'm figuring it out. This is not, but it's always something I've wanted to do and never had time. So I'm learning, right? That's an opportunity. It's an opportunity for me to enjoy the spring weather. You know what I never get to do? Enjoy the spring weather because it's the busiest time of the school year. And I'm trying to enjoy that spring weather every single day. Um, it is an opportunity for me to do some house projects. I've got a lot of closets to clean out. I just mopped my floors this morning. Um, that was really great. Uh, it's an opportunity for me to do more reading and writing. It's an opportunity for me to sit and meditate. It's an opportunity for me to do a lot of things, you guys. Does all, do all of those opportunities, are they the same as what I lost? No. 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 But noticing them helps provide a balance. It provides something for me to generate happiness from. It gives me a focus and a feeling of purpose. Okay? It is not false. It is very, very true. So think about that. You have control of your mind. You have power over your own happiness. Okay, by controlling your thoughts. The third one right there, okay? Accept the things to which fate bonds you and love the people with whom fate brings you together, but do so with all of your heart. In this time of social distancing and voluntary quarantine, I thought that might be important. Maybe you have a hard time with some of your family members. Maybe you have a hard time with roommates or housemates or people that are in your home. Maybe it is difficult, okay? Um, there's nothing that's going to change it right now. Accept the things to which fate binds you. This is our circumstance. It is out of our control, right? Epictetus says, if we become a slave to the things that are out of our control, we become really unhappy, right? That's what Epictetus said, right? Marcus Aurelius is kind of telling you the same thing. Love the people with whom fate brings you together and do so with your whole heart. Does that loving them in the moment change maybe what they did yesterday or what they've done in the past or even what you've done in the past, right? Like check yourself. Like we're not always perfect. Maybe you're the one causing us some of the tension. Let's like evaluate that and accept that responsibility. But how can you love these people today? How can you love these people today? And maybe you're with a family that you love dearly and this is like the best family time of all time and you're just really enjoying the togetherness and that's so amazing. Um, are we doing it with all of our heart? Okay. Are we doing it with all of our heart? And can you encourage those around you that don't have a home life like yours? Right? Um, to How could they do it? 
without denying their own experience and evidence, right? Because we can't deny our experience and our evidence. Maybe our home is not the coolest place to be, and that's just a real thing. But that doesn't change that in this moment, right now, we can act with love. How, what does that look like? What does that look like for you? What does that look like for your household? Okay? Just a little reminder, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. I included this one because, for me, this is a moment-to-moment -moment thing. Okay? And I would encourage you to make it a moment-to-moment -moment thing. Um, I can intellectually know I don't have control over any outside events, but then 10 minutes later, if I'm feeling anxious or tense or upset or whatever about the fact that um, I don't get to go see my friends or I had to cancel my trip early or I have a trip planned for a couple of weeks from now, I'm not going to be able to take it. It's canceled. It's going to be over. If I get upset about those things, do I have power over my mind? Nope. I need to re-realize that right now, the outside events are controlling me, right? And in this case, the absence of outside events that I was really looking forward to, okay? This, this realization that you have power over your mind and not events, this is a moment-by-moment -moment thing, which is kind of a drag. I'm not going to lie. Being a stoic is like a real pain um, because, like, your brain will constantly wander into negativity and doubt and fear and anxiety because it's... It's habit. It's an easy place for it to go. And evolutionarily speaking, I think some of that stuff kept our species alive for a really long time, right? Fear kept us from being attacked. Nervousness helped us to prepare things for our survival. I, these are evolutionary instincts, and there's nothing wrong with them. They're in your body, and they're real, okay? And they're based on biology, but also probably your experience. But we can still interrupt them. We can interrupt them for our benefit, and that's something I want you to consider. That that interruption is the work of a lifetime, and that interruption is the thing that can build the character that you want. And I know you all want to be the people, right? That's No one wakes up in the morning and says, you know what I want to be today? Bad person, super duper awful, the devil incarnate, that's what I want to be. No, none of you are thinking that, I'm not thinking that, we're not thinking that. So how do we become the people we want to be? We do it every day by controlling the power of our mind, okay? And just a reminder... The art of living is more like wrestling than dancing. It's work. It's hard. You guys, I love to dance. And you should dance more. We should dance more. Dancing is celebrating. If you're not having dance parties in your house during this quarantine, I don't know what you're doing. You're doing it wrong. Have a dance party. We all need to dance. Shake it. But living really, really well is difficult. It is hard. And circumstances like this remind us of how hard it actually is. But it provides us opportunity to learn a lot of mental discipline, physical discipline, social discipline, right? Um, and those things are going to benefit us, right? Where how often do I hear you guys, and I say it too, oh man, I want to do X, Y, and Z, but I don't have time, I don't have time, I don't have time, homework, exams, my job, my sports, my this, my whatever. We never have enough time. You guys, literally all we have is time now. All we have is time. Are you using it to do some of those things that you always say you don't have time for? I sure hope you are. I sure hope you are. And here's my last one, okay? One of my favorites from good old Marcus. Waste no more time arguing what a good man should be. Be one. He didn't care what kind of arguments you could come up for, come up with in your head for anything. If you're not living it, if you're not doing the thing, if you're not acting every day, every moment in such a way that is virtuous, honorable, noble, you know, full of self-respect and respect for others, you're wasting your time. Construct all the arguments you want. The proof is in the pudding. What are you doing? What are you doing today? And that's what I'm going to leave you with, you guys. All right. This has been Real. I'll check in with you hopefully tomorrow. Bye.